We're going to dive into something that's changing the financial game completely. Artificial intelligence, yes, AI is no longer just a science fiction concept. It's here and it's transforming how we invest, save, and even how banks operate. We're talking about the status of the chip sector amid recent volatility and looking at the discussion between the Biden administration and top techs in the AI space. We're also going to look at iOS 18 and the new features that everybody's talking about. But first, let's start off with the story that's trending. NVIDIA, where people are basically trying to understand the status of the chip sector and what's going on because there's a lot of volatility and NVIDIA is trying to hold on onto its dominant position. So we're going to hear from a Yahoo finance person. He's going to be telling us that investors are worried and big tech companies will see the payoff of their AI investments. Let's take a listen. Big tech companies are investing millions on artificial intelligence, but it's still unclear when investors will see the return on that investment. And chip stocks have been taken along on a wild ride as a result. For more, we're bringing in Ruben Roy, Applied Technology Analyst at Stiefel. And Ruben, we know these big tech giants, these hyperscalers are aggressively spending on AI, but we've also seen the volatile swings these past few months. So from an investor perspective, what are the biggest concerns that you're hearing from your clients? Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, certainly, I would say the number one question we're getting is this investor debate around, as you said, all of this investment that we've seen now going on, uh, I guess, two years relative to ROI or returns on the infrastructure investment. Where's the, you know, where's the beef or where's the money on on some of the uh, infrastructure that's being built out? So. Uh, from an investor perspective, it, it certainly seems like there are concerns as we look ahead to 2025 as to the sustainability of the CapEx spending from the big cloud service providers, whether or not investment spending will extend into Fortune 500 enterprise, and what's next for the big suppliers of hardware into the investment cycle, like uh, NVIDIA, for instance. And so certainly that's top of mind for investors, and, uh, you know, it's been reflected in the volatility, as you mentioned, in the stock, NVIDIA underperforming the S&P 500 over the last three months, but certainly having a a very strong year uh, to date, nonetheless. There you have it. Uh, People are concerned that everybody's rushing into the AI boom. People are investing. They're putting a lot of money into it. I want to know from you, are you investing? Are you getting involved in AI? What are you doing at the current moment? Let us know in the comment section, because it seems everybody that is going into the AI boom is making a lot of money. Yes, NVIDIA. It stands out as a major benefactor of the AI boom. Despite the recent, very recent volatility, the chip maker's stock has more than doubled since the start of 2024. So if you had $1,000 in NVIDIA, you'd be sitting at about $2,000. So it's doubled in a space of even one year. So meanwhile, top AI business leaders, they actually met with the Biden administration to discuss the emerging industry needs And CNBC spoke to NVIDIA CEO. Let's listen to what he had to say. We've been here just outside the White House all morning because there was a meeting this morning between the Biden administration and top tech leaders on AI. We saw Sam Altman of OpenAI. We expected Ruth Porat of Google, Dario Amade of Anthropic, Brad Smith of Microsoft were all here. And then we we caught up with Jensen Huang of NVIDIA. As you mentioned, we got to talk with him for a few minutes about the 2024 election, about that meeting, about AI and his thoughts on all of it. We have the tape here for you. Let's listen in. What can you tell us about the meeting today? Well, we're talking about uh, energy, uh, about this new industry called AI factories and artificial intelligence. And obviously, uh, we're at the beginning of a new industrial revolution. And uh, this industry is going to be producing intelligence. And what it takes is is uh, energy and, of course, a lot of great computer science and, and uh, uh, large computing systems that NVIDIA makes. And so so we've got we've got to make sure that that uh, everybody understands uh, the needs coming, the opportunities of it, the challenges of it, and um, and do it in, in the uh, the most efe- efficient and uh, scalable way we can. So there you have it. This is the leader, the CEO of Nvidia. He's coming out and he's basically saying that the U.S. government had meetings with all of them, all the top guys in AI, to discuss this future. Because he's talking about AI factories. I mean, we used to talk about factories to create cars, clothing. And now people are talking about AI factories. And he's saying that they need to discuss a roadmap and understand what does the future look like. And this is important. And I myself, as somebody who has advised the South African government on the fourth industrial revolution, these are things we discuss to say AI is here 
There are going to be factories about AI. There are going to be a lot of people that are getting involved in AI. It's a whole new industry. But he basically said something that shocked me a little bit. He said that AI is basically the beginning of a new industrial revolution. Now, if you remember, when we talk about the fourth industrial revolution, people were talking about AI and they were including it in the fourth industrial revolution. But he's saying no. This is now a beginning of a new industrial revolution. Is it the fifth industrial revolution? Is AI going to lead us in the fifth industrial revolution? These are interesting remarks that you should be thinking about. And as you know, I've always been a first. When it came to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, I started very early educating people. And the AI boom is here, and I'm doing exactly that, coming on and ensuring that you know what's going on and that you're making an informed decision. Absolutely. Do you see the need for a federal role here in terms of federal investment in, in combination with private investment? Well, there's probably going to have to be uh, public, public-private public collaboration in this area because because the, uh, the rate of uh, growth is really quite high. Um, although, although artificial intelligence uh, consumes a lot of energy to train, it also saves a lot of energy when you consume it. Uh, because ultimately, it's not about training the model, it's about using the model. And uh, whether it's in healthcare or uh, climate, uh, climate technology or uh, just running the power grid, artificial intelligence has the opportunity to really save a ton of, ton of energy. And so, so I think people are, are uh, uh, grappling with uh, the, the scale of, of the opportunity ahead and, of course, the scale of the challenges ahead. And so it's going to require public and private uh, collaboration. Collaboration. Yeah. Do you think the U.S. is doing enough at this point to be competitive with China and other countries? Well, this, this administration is determined to uh, do the most and do, do it the fastest. And that's really, that really speaks volumes about about uh, the reason why we have this meeting today. I mean, that's a shocking observation. He's basically saying that the U.S. is doing the most to try and beat China when it comes to AI. Now, we all know there's a big race globally, China versus the U.S., who's going to dominate the AI space, who's going to take over. And the CEO of NVIDIA is telling us that the U.S. is doing the most they can to dominate the space and win. And I'm very concerned about Africa, very concerned about Europe, very concerned about a lot of countries that are not involved in AI or don't understand what's going on because after some time, it is the countries that actually get the big opening gap that actually create amazing things and the rest of the countries just follow through. And I mean, he's saying some very interesting things here about AI. Let's listen to the next point he makes here. Have money behind it at this point? Well, you know, if this country doesn't have the money, I don't see anybody else in the world that, that can possibly take advantage of this incredible new industry. And so, uh, you know, I think people are starting to, to realize that AI is not not just a new computer science. It's a new way of doing software. It's going to, of course, revolutionize the computer industry, but it's going to create a whole new industry that sits on top of it, uh, that produces um, uh, intelligent skills and, and produces knowledge. And this industry is going to be quite large. It's going to be the, you know, hopefully the most exciting of the new industries that the world's ever seen. He says it's going to be the most exciting industry that the world has ever seen. And I am starting to believe it. Now, as many of you know, my background was in blockchain and cryptocurrencies. And I've started understanding AI, dabbling in AI. And I'm beginning to see that the difference between cryptocurrencies and AI is that we're dealing with intelligence here. And intelligence continues to change. Whereas with a cryptocurrency, you've got a fixed Bitcoin. It just goes up and down in price. But when you look at AI... It's intelligence that evolves and continues to become better every single day. And I think this is what's really making it exciting, learning about the new models and understanding them. And that's the reason why on this YouTube channel, I'm going to make you an offer to become a member because I'm going to start posting tutorials of how I'm building AI systems, what I'm learning about AI and making sure that you are a part of it in understanding what I'm doing. So if you're a subscriber to the channel, you get access to that and even get access to the same blueprints that I am using when it comes to AI. Can I ask you a quick question about export controls? Is there any policy, U.S. policy, that you would like to see change in order to make sure that you're able to make sales overseas? Well, export control and national security... Uh, industrial resilience, um, uh, supply chain resilience—all of those, all of those matters are really complicated. And and uh, this administration understands the nuance of it. And so, uh, we, we would like to see, uh, of course, the U.S. industries be as vibrant as possible to export uh, American standards all over the world and have the rest of the world be built on on American standards. Um, uh, of course, uh, national security uh, incredibly important, and we have to safeguard all of that at the same time. And so. So the, uh, uh, this is why policymakers have such a, such a difficult job. They have to balance all of these uh, various requirements 
and make sure that that uh, we have a great policy that that somehow balances and uh, keeps all of this uh, up in the air and thriving. And so I think the the, uh, uh, the and the most important thing for us is just you know make sure that we inform. Uh, the administration on uh, what we know about about the technology and the industry says that we're cultivating uh, and and uh, 100 percent make sure we comply with the policies. Can I ask you one more question on tariffs with this election? There's a lot of talk about potentially across the board tariffs of 10 to 20 percent and up to 60 percent on China. Do you have concerns about how that would impact NVIDIA's business or concerns about the policy in general? Well, I'm not very very informed in most of that stuff. I think the um, uh, our company, of course, uh, serves serves industries globally, and uh, we're one of the few companies in the world that serves every single AI company in the world. And uh, uh, we're in healthcare and logistics and transportation and retail and retail. I mean, the the number of industries that we serve is really quite large, and so uh, you know, obviously, all of these matters uh, are are complicated and and uh, requires. Uh, nuanced thinking from from uh, the administration. So I, I trust that they can make great decisions. Yeah, absolutely. The w- number one thing we tend to hear from business leaders is on stability, especially when it comes to this election. Do you have thoughts on, on supporting one candidate over the other, especially when it comes to keeping a calm, stable business environment? Uh, well, uh, you know, one of the things that, that's really important is, uh, and this affects us in export control, is just to have a, a stable policy. Um, of course, policies have to be has to adapt to the to uh, the changing uh, environment, and and uh, in the, in our world, the changing environment is is literally real time, and and so uh, I I um, uh, appreciate the challenges it has on on the administration, and and uh, uh, meanwhile we have to simultaneously seek and um, uh, strive for uh, American technologies to be the safest choice, to be the best choice. And uh, we want the rest of the world's uh, industries to be built on top of our of our uh, of our industry. And so, uh, stability matters. Uh, um, and of course, we have to continue to be the best, which which uh, American companies know how to do. Uh, to the extent that we have uh, stability, I think it's going to be great. There you have it. He says the rest of the world will have to build the AI applications on top of American technology. And he says America will be the best and needs to continue to be the best. Now, I have a question. If you're not in America, you are essentially already in the back foot of AI. What are you doing to make sure that the AI boom doesn't pass you down? Because there's been lots of booms that have come into this world. The third industrial revolution came and a lot of people got involved into social media. And we saw the Mark Zuckerbergs, Americans, coming out on top. And now we have got a new boom that is... AI, what are we going to see? Is that America always going to be at the top of all these booms? Or are we going to have other countries getting involved and actually taking action within these booms? These are very interesting things that we're seeing and that are happening. Now, moving straight along to the financial world, because you might be asking yourself, AI is being used for everything. Uh, Is it also being used for finances? Yes, people are using it to analyze the stock prices. They're also using it to detect fraud in banks. And some people are even using it to get personal financial advice through apps. So AI, it's a bit like having a 24-hour financial expert who never sleeps or gets tired. Imagine that. Now, let's look at trading because that's one of the cool areas. And I think AI is dominating in trading. They're algorithms that are scanning millions of data points in seconds. And they're making trades faster than any human being could ever think was possible. Now, there are already billions of dollars in trades every single day being conducted by AI and people that are making money from this. And I want to show you a AI copy trading bot that has been created. And it's quite an old bot, but just for those people that are wondering, but how does this whole AI advanced trading tool thing work? I just want to show you this video so that you get a bit of understanding of it. What up, traders? It's me, TJ Miller. Yeah. I'm going to tell you all about 3commas.io. It's trade automation for cryptocurrency traders. The crypto market never sleeps. We know that. So it's impossible to sit in front of a screen and be awake at every moment for that one opportune trade. But with 3commas, you don't have to sit at your computer constantly to be an expert trader. You can set the trades in advance, automate your strategy. And if you don't know what to do, cheat off somebody else's hard work with three commas marketplace. So imagine there's a marketplace where you can look at all of the strategies of seasoned traders, and then you can copy those ideas and create a bot from their very own trading signals. Huh? Less work for you. 
Three Commas has an invite friends program available to anyone, right? Anyone that wants to refer a friend where you're in 25% of the referral subscription cost for the lifetime of their account. Say what? Hold up. Where was I? So Three Commas is an all-in-one experience. You can see an overview, manage your portfolio, execute your trades, and together we're going to work on adding some extra commas to your portfolio. Hi there. Today we'll discuss the basic principle of Trade Santa's bot. We'll choose a trading bot with long strategy, which means we will expect the coin's price to soar and make a profit as soon as the price reaches the target level. We'll show you how our bot operates on a simple example. Let's say you buy 10 coins at a price of $20 each. You expect that the price will rise and want to sell at a profit of 1% when it does. But the market goes in the opposite direction. In this case, the bot places extra orders. Let's say you set the bot to execute two extra orders at the step of 5%. So if the price drops to $19, the bot will buy 10 more coins, and another 10 if the price drops to $18. As a result, if the market goes down by 10%, you will have 30 coins with $19 as the average price. In this case, you would need the price to bounce back to just $19.19 to reach your target of 1% take profit, even lower than the price of the first purchase. Without increasing position in the market drop, you would only have 10 coins at the price of $20, and you would need the price to bounce back to $20.20 after the drop to get the target take profit. So by increasing your position when the market drops, Trade Santa Bot gives you the chance to receive the target level of take profit at a lower price when the market starts to recover after the fall. But beware, you also need to understand the risks of increasing the position in the falling market. Are those just examples of some of the trading bots that have existed? Now imagine with trading robots, you're now adding AI on top of that to leverage fluctuations in value. And I've been doing a lot of reading about this and a lot of people are making a lot of money through this. There's some big hedge funds and even some retail traders that are using AI-powered platforms to predict stock prices, to find trends, to optimize their portfolios. So if you want to level up, I'm going to do a video and show you what I'm doing so that you can also learn. So do make sure that you subscribe to this channel and wait for that video. Now, in other news, Apple has just released iOS 18, which lets you redesign your iPhone's home screen. You customize your control center. It also includes hidden features like uh, locking certain apps, deleting numbers in the calculator, and more. But Apple tools are not all available until iOS 18.1. You know how they usually do it. You have it. iOS has some very interesting things that they're doing now. You might be asking yourself, why are companies all now focusing on making their devices accessible or work with AI? It is because AI is the new thing. AI is the thing that is going to cause many to become leaders in this industry. And it's important that you educate yourself and begin to understand how to utilize AI and how you too can be a leader when it comes to this. So make sure that you are watching and subscribed to this show so that we can try and educate you on what is going on with AI, how you can use it, how you can lead and how AI will benefit you. Thank you so much for joining us.